Alexander Dillon from CRI. Lane 5, Craig McCullough from Montreal. Lane 6 is Graham Peters of Peterborough. And Lane 7 is Marcus Brown of Penn AC. Marcus just getting locked in. You can see him back his yellow boat in. All right, I'm just going to take a, a quick break. So, Ali, uh, I'm going to leave you here and hand my headset over to uh, Pat Okins, who's going to fill in, and he's one of our many helpers we've got this week. We've got a pretty solid roster, I think, of commentators that are going to be uh, broadcasting to all of you listening and watching on YouTube. Uh, so I'm going to hand it over to Pat. I'll be back shortly, and uh, good luck, Pat and Ali. Great to have you, Brent. Thanks a lot, Brent. Thanks for joining us, Pat. Glad to have you. We're just tuning into the start of the senior men's single. There's about two minutes to go before the start of this event, uh, 446. And these events uh, being finals, they run every 10 minutes. So they've got a little bit of time in between each race to make sure there's no, there's no wake on the course, uh, to make sure that the crews clear the finish line and they an absolutely unimpeded oh and they're off starting just a touch early in the senior men's single yeah it can be a really nerve-wracking time uh, ali tell me about some of your experiences waiting at the start what's that like uh it depends on the crew i think as a coxswain my job is to just keep everybody's nerves uh in check a little bit including my own and uh just make sure that i'm straight because that can always be a concern depending on weather um and just kind of doing a quick checklist you know have we done up our oarlocks, uh, are we, is everybody square, is everything ready to go, are we ready to hit that first stroke and, and take off? And for the purposes of a single, of course, the athlete has to be doing all of that mental check themselves as well. No one there to help them. It's all them. Absolutely. So I, these are senior men. These are quite experienced athletes. Um, I know last year's winner was from Ottawa. It was Josh King. This was the first of four Henley gold medals that Josh would go on to win that week. Um, Josh was also a lightweight athlete, so he would have weighed in compared to these guys who are open weight athletes primarily. Um, in lane two, we've got uh, Zach from Pittsburgh. Zach rode for FIZU in the States uh, in 2013. Lane three, Brett Larson of UVic. He won the senior men's eight and the dash eight last year. Alex Din Dillon from Community is the head coach of Boston College. Uh, lane five, Craig McCullough from Montreal also rose for McGill. And you can see here lane six, you've got Graham Peters from Peterborough. Graham was a world champion in the under 23 men's quad in 2016. He also won the under 23 men's single and the champ men's eight in 2017. And he looks like he's having a pretty good race so far. Doesn't look very close at this point. First 500 meters in and it's a very commanding lead already one boat length over a very close field from the semifinals. Yeah, looks like Graham over top of uh, Alex Dillon from CRI. Marcus Brown, again, lane seven in the far side there. He's from uh, Penn AC. Uh, during the school year, he rose for LaSalle University in Philadelphia. These guys are racing for the Jack Guest Memorial Trophy. The trophy is named after scholar Jack Guest, who began rowing in 1924 at the Argonaut Rowing Club in Toronto. He went on to win a silver medal in the men's double at the 1928 Olympic Games, as well as the Diamond Skulls at the Henley Royal Regatta, which is one of only three Canadians who would ever do so. He was described by Guy Nichols, who is a notable British rower, as the most perfect sculler I have ever seen. I remember seeing a picture of uh, Jack Guest and I think three other Canadians who'd all won the, the Diamond Skulls at the Henley Royal Regatta. Uh, and they're all sitting in a four together. I don't think they were racing at the time, but uh, and that picture was taken at the Henley Grandstand uh, when it was first built, I think in 1930. There's definitely a lot of history out here on the course. As I mentioned, some of these trophies are, are, are pieces of history in and of themselves. Uh, great shot there of Graham Peters. I know Graham is racing in uh, what he described to me as only four events this year. So Graham's got a, a long week ahead of him, um, but this is his first final and he looks very confident. At this point, he will have, all of these uh, guys will have been battling through first a heat and then a semifinal to get to this event. Uh, as well as whatever else they were racing. I think Graham was also racing a double. So at this point, he may have already had three, maybe four races. For sure. I know Graham races uh, tomorrow afternoon in a double final at the end of the day as well. So 
you know, this is what he's focused on today. And I'm certain as soon as this race is uh, wrapped up over and done, he will uh, set his sights on the next race. Refocus, absolutely. Where we're looking now, f we're positioned, the camera is on the 1500 meter pylon. So we're watching the guys as they row through that third 500 meter stretch. Now, again, from our perspective, it doesn't look very choppy or very windy, um, but as we know, the conditions have been uh, steadily getting a little bit rockier as they approach the finish line. Uh, but you wouldn't know it looking at Graham right now. He looks very tall, very composed. Um, this is the kind of rowing and the kind of caliber of rowing I would expect from somebody who is a world champion. Indeed, there's also a massive spread uh, between the crews here, um, and it might be a bit deceiving. If you looked at the times just from the semifinals, all of these athletes were within, I think, four or five seconds of each other. So it was actually really close on the face of it. But when you get to the real race and the real final where the chips are down, uh, you can start to see more of a spread. It's also a very much a mental game uh, in this event. I think the single that Graham is racing in today is named after the Peterborough Olympians. So uh, it's got the names of all of the athletes from the Peterborough Rowing Club who have gone on to row at the Olympics. And it was very recently dedicated. And here he goes, crossing into the last 500 meter stretch. It's an emphatic lead. A lot of open water there with still 500 meters to go. And you're right, the spread is... is not what I probably would have expected, given that it's the senior men's single and they would have been, uh, you know, battling it out. But these are experienced athletes. They might be choosing at this point. They said, you know, Graham's got this or, uh, you know, I know I've got second or third place. Uh, I'm going to lock it down and get ready for my next race. It's a long regatta, a lot of racing still ahead. That's right. This regatta started on Tuesday. It's not over till Sunday afternoon. Um, we've dealt with already a number of different uh, weather conditions and even a delay. So these guys have been kind of put through their paces in terms of training and, uh, and heat and humidity. And it's a long week. Graham Peters now approaching the last 250 meters. You can tell because that's where the buoys change from yellow to red. And we're into the red right now. And I'm sure that's just not a figurative speech with the buoys, but also one that very much applies to how people are feeling at this point in the race. Energy depleted. I know watching Graham, he's just kind of putting the blades in. Uh, he doesn't look like he's really turning it on for a sprint, but he's certainly not letting those guys get a whole lot closer as he approaches the finish line out there in lane six. It's really an interesting point to be. If you're leading by that much, what are you thinking at that point? I wonder if anyone ever gets complacent thinking that they've got this race in the bag. Uh, you know, even in these, as you can see, the water's getting pretty rough here at this point. People still need to be careful, making sure that they maintain good form right to the finish. For sure. And these boats are not very wide. It's only, uh, you know, about the width of uh, my hips. So I don't know about yours, but uh, they, you hit a buoy and it could be all over for you. So it looks like Graham is actually quite composed Quite he's taking it down absolutely yeah. excellent work from well Graham done. Peters of Peterborough so moving up from under 23 last year to the senior men's single this year uh, that just goes to show what a great scholar he is looks like Brent Duncan is right back here uh, from his break and we can uh, I'll throw it back over to him thanks for coming out Patrick Brent Duncan. I'm joining you again for uh, what's going to be event number nine. Um, joining Ali Zimmerman uh, at the Royal Canadian Henley Regatta. Uh, Pat Okins, one of our multiple um, commentators, we're going to have all week long, bringing you all the finals live streamed at the 136th Royal Canadian Henley Regatta. So, so far, we're looking at uh, three gold medals at a lane five, uh, four from lane six, and one from lane seven. Keeping track here. So that, uh, as we look at the, the screen right now, you can see the far flag uh, next to the finish tower, the only Canadian flag um, over there on the far side of the course, has been pretty consistently showing a tail 